Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today our artistic journey brings us to five easy ways to create frames around your pictures. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Thank you for that and let's get started. So in my last tutorial I showed you a way to create a frame around a picture and some people were confused over the difference between the pixel kind of layer and the image kind of layer. And this is also based on the workflow because I think a lot of you open up pictures right away and then edit them. And this is where you, when you open up an image, the image appears as named background, but the layer kind is pixel and the layer is also locked. And so the difference is if you select your move tool and you select the layer, there are not really any options up here. And when you go to the image layer, which you get when you place a file, you get the fill, you get the stroke, you get all these kind of nice options up here. Also to answer this question before we go on, uh, what's my workflow? Well, the reason why I almost never open an image directly is because I don't know the pixel size, I don't know the resolution, I don't know the color format it's using if I open it right away. So what I am doing is that I create a new file, so file new, and there I can set up everything I need. You can see here the color profile, the color format, um, the pixel dimensions, the resolution, all the things that I need. And I know them from the start. So I create this new file and then if I need a picture inside of that canvas, I go to file and place and I simply select the picture and put it in there. So let's do this real quick. Boom. And there we have the picture. And you can see that now this is the layer style image and it also has the original file name in here. So I can actually delete this one, which is the other one. Okay, cool. So the way this will turn also into a pixel layer is if I rasterize it. So let's have a look at that. Right click, rasterize. You can see now it's turned into a pixel layer, just like our background layer. Um, so let's resize this real quick to show you how to create a frame around that in an easy way. Again, this is now a pixel layer, so you don't have the choices up here with the outline. So what you're doing instead is take the rectangle tool and make a rectangle over all of the image. And if it doesn't snap to it, click on the image and then click back to the shape. And now it will snap to the outsides. If it doesn't snap at all, by the way, go up here to view and then to whoops, and then to snapping manager and make sure that snapping is enabled. And you have here a lot of different choices. Check if the kind of snapping you need is enabled with this little hook here. Okay, cool. So let's go back here. And now we have the rectangle as the same size as the image. So what we're gonna do next is again, select the move tool, select your rectangle, and up here you have now the fill for the rectangle, which is the fill color. Click on that and click on the little uh, circle here with the red line through it. That means no fill. So now it's invisible. And now we go over to stroke and here you can set up any color you want. I'm going to use white in this case. And now the next thing we want to do is to set up the line thickness. So you can see here I can set up any kind of line I want. It goes in this case up to 100, but you can enter a number that's higher than that by hand. So let's say 150 and you can have that press enter and now it's 150. Okay, so uh, let's go back to 100 in this case. Another thing you can see here is that you have a certain alignment. Alignment means to in what way does this line up to the border of our rectangle? So in this case, as you can see, the blue line is in the center between the outside and the inside of this white line, which you can see here by alignment center. So the next one you have is inside. So this is inside and then you can also have outside. So the alignment is outside around the blue line. So this depends on where do you want to have the frame? How do you want the frame to behave? Now you can also see that the corner is round in this case. You find here the joint 
which you have the possibility between a round joint, which is this one, then you have a bevel joint, which is a flat one, and then you also have the meter joint, and this is a pointy one. Okay, you have, by the way, more options. Write in the comments if you want to see the other options that you have uh, for these kind of corners, because there's a lot of them. I don't want to use them in this picture, just to give you a little heads up. Over here, you have more corner choices, concave, cut out, straight, rounded, and for rounded, you can also set up like the radius, stuff like that. Uh, also, what you're seeing here is that this is not creating a mask. You would have to mask the edges of the image separately from the um, outside of your frame, basically. Okay, good. Let's set this up to uh, none again. So we have our pointed edge. Uh, one more thing I want to point out here is you can set up scale with object. That might be useful if you want to scale it a lot um, or not decide it on the final size. So you can click on that. And um, then what you can do is select both of these layers. So the rectangle layer, click the rectangle layer and then hold shift and click the other layer for the image. So both are blue and then press control and G on your keyboard. This creates a group and now you can resize them. And as you can see, because I have clicked scale with object, this does also resize. So that's a very easy way to do that. Okay, cool. Before I go on, it works exactly the same way with the background. The only difference is that you would make a rectangle over all of the background naturally. You can see like this and then set up the stroke just like what I was saying. Of course, if it's now on outside, you can't see anything because it's beyond the edge of your canvas. So you have to set it either to inside or uh, to align with your, whoa, this is really big, uh, with the edge of your image to see the frame. All right, okay, so let's delete that real quick. Okay, a second way I wanna show you uses almost the same technique, but this will uh, use the outline as a mask for another picture so you can have a colorful frame if you want to. For this purpose, I'm going to place another picture on my canvas. So let's go to File, Place, and let's select this very colorful image here. I will rotate that real quick, zip, like this. Okay, cool. So now that we have this, you can see this is just an image layer. I will put this on top like that, and then I will take the rectangle out of the group like this. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm clicking on my colorful picture, just the colorful picture, by the way, in this case and I'm going to press Control G again. So only the picture is inside of the group. And then I'm clicking on the rectangle, which is basically creating my frame, right click and say mask to below. And this will create a mask out of the outline. So you can see now we have this kind of colorful line here. And the reason why I made a group before that is because now I can still move the picture around if I want to and find a kind of interesting way where I want to place that. I can resize it, everything I want, so I can have a really nice and colorful frame around my picture, which can be a cool effect if you want to have that. And as you can see, it is super easy to have that. And you can even um, put this still in a group with the image. So we can still, like we had this other image in a group, I hope this is not getting confusing right now. So we have the other image here in a group. Let's pull this out. We can delete that group. Um, so you can see here, this is our image. This is the image that we are using for the colorful frame in a separate group. And this is our rectangle that we use as a mask. So now I close the group, I select the group, and I also select the pixel layer with my image that's inside of the frame. And again, I press Control G. So this is creating a group with everything inside. And now technically I should be able to, yeah, you see, I can simply resize that and rotate that and everything is coming with it. No problem there. Okay, cool. So this is the second way on how to create an easy frame and this kind of more fancy, more colorful. You can do whatever you want with that. Okay, good. So 
Another thing that was pointed out in the comments is uh, that I was asked, why are you not using the strokes? So let's delete this real quick. Um, why aren't you using the, for the layer effects, which we have over here, as you can see, there is, um, there's an outline here. And you can also set that to white or any kind of color you want. And you can set a radius. And this is also creating a frame. And maybe that's easier. But there is a big problem with that. The big problem with that is the outline. You can't control the corners. That is a big problem. But it also has a benefit. So you might think about, mm, do I want to do it? Do I not want to do it? So what's the benefit here? Um, first of all, it's quick. It's easy. It's hassle-free and it follows the shape, so that's also very nice. Um, but if you click here on this little cogwheel, you get uh, more options. You can see here you have a blend mode and all that kind of stuff. But the most important thing is, um, first of all, you also have alignment. Like I said, you can't control the shape of the color. This will be round. But with the alignment, if you say you want to have it center, uh, the radius is a little bit smaller. And if you put it inside, it's even a pointy edge, but it's inside. So this will cover up your image. If you want to have a frame where you don't cover up anything of the image and you have to put it, uh, the alignment, whoops, uh, okay, to the outside, then the corner will be round. So there's a little bit of a downside here. Uh, but what you can do, and this is the huge benefit that for some reason the other way cannot do with the line is that you can set the fill style to contour. You can set both of them to gradient, by the way. I didn't say this about the other one. You can make this a gradient if you want to. But let's talk about contour for a minute. Contour means that this is following the shape of your frame. And this can be very beneficial doesn't look too great right now. Uh, let's change the color so you can click here on the gradient and then click on the red uh, on the on the left dot. And let's set this up, for example, to a nice blue and the other one to a nice pink like that. And now you have a colorful frame around that. You can even reverse that if you want to. And as you can see, this is following the shape of our outline. So this can be very beneficial if you want this kind of contour gradient as a frame for your picture. And if you put it on the inside, it's even getting to be pointy. So there is some benefit to that. But like I said, the downside is you don't really have control over um, how round the edge is or if it's rounded at all unless with the alignment. Okay, so let's go to the next one. And that one is to use a PNG. So you have a picture frame, which can also be nice. Um, let's turn off this outline here. And then I go to file and place. And on um, pages like Pixabay, for example, you can find PNG files. It's important that's a PNG file because that means that the center of the image is already cut out, which when you look at it on the website, you will see that there's a checkerboard inside of the area that's transparent and a PNG can have transparency. Otherwise, you can, of course, use any kind of picture of a frame and just cut out the inside, which should be rather easy because most frames are just rectangles. So that shouldn't be much uh, work to do. And then you simply line this up with the outside of your image. Oh, it's a little bit smaller like that. And within seconds, you have a picture frame. In this case, maybe it's a little bit hard to see. Mm. You have to create a fill layer. Let's create a fill layer real quick so we can see what we're doing. A uh, new fill layer. Opacity like that. Yeah, that's a bit better. Okay, cool. So as you can see here, we have our PNG in the background or on top actually with our image. Let's group this also. Control G to group it. And as you can see, now we have a nice actual frame around our pictures. So this is a way you can do it too if you want to. 
with any kind of uh, PNG frame that you can find on the internet or a JPEG uh, where you can just cut out the middle part or create a mask for the middle part. So this is a really easy way to create fancy frames around your pictures. Okay, so let's go to the last one. And this is the one I have already shown in my last tutorial, which is that you place the file. So file, place, you use the image. Uh, whoops, it's behind the fill layer now. And let's resize this to a smaller size. And as you can see now, this layer style is image. So that means I have these options up here. And this is, in my book, the easiest way to do that. So go to fill and set up your fill color like you would. And the stroke, no, not the, sorry, not the fill color, the stroke color. Get up here, set up your stroke color, any kind of color you want and set the stroke thickness and again the alignment of the stroke and the joint which is the corner so this is i find the easiest way but for this you have to place the image inside of the canvas so the layer type is image and not pixel that's important to know okay so these are the five easy ways to create frames around your images I hope this was a fun tutorial, like it, share it if you can, because this is really helpful to my channel. Maybe click this little bell if you subscribe to my channel so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next episode. Bye.